Hello, this is Easy Tom, Certified Ableton Instructor, teaching down at Dub Academy in Austin, Texas. This tutorial here is going to be covering a technique called preset surfing that I picked up from a recent tutorial from Mr. Bill. I'll link out to that tutorial here. In his tutorial, he plays a chord progression through the Zebra 2 VST and clicks on different presets along the way. This way he switches different presets in time with the chord progression and captures all that down into a bounce track. The idea is that you then edit this down and find the little exotic bits that you like between preset changes and refine this down into something that you like. Definitely check out his tutorial and then come back over here. I'm going to take it one step further and automate these program changes using a Max for Live device. I should point out that this tutorial is in the Ableton Live 9 beta and that Max for Live now comes included with Ableton Live 9 suite. This technique will work with any VST or synthesizer that supports program changes. We'll start with the Virus TI because it was the easiest to set up. Here's my chord progression that I created using Consequence from Sugarbytes. I'm just going to play through the basic chord progression on the Virus TI with a simple patch so you can hear the chords that we're working with. This Max for Live device is called Dial to Program Change. Once you add this device to this track, you're able to use MIDI CC messages to automate the preset changes. So now you can just draw them in. It's best to select a grid that will work with your chord progression. I found that a 1 4th grid works pretty good. And what it gives you is this nice dial. So this can be mapped to MIDI controllers so that you can actually dial in program changes. This can be very useful for musicians who want to, on the fly, change a lot of the elements of their performance. So this device is very useful for lots of different applications. I'm going to play the chord progression through the virus with the modulation in place, and we're going to take a bounce down of this so we can work with it. I set up all three of these synthesizers to all route into a track called Glitchy. I'm using this to bounce down the synthesizers. The only thing to note with the Virus TI is that you need to use the bank drop down to select different RAM banks on the virus. So bank one is RAM bank A, bank two is RAM bank B, etc. Okay, now I'm gonna play through the chord progression on the Zebra 2. To get it to work, you have to set up what's called a MIDI program list. And you can find that down here in the preset window. Uh, the idea here is that you create your own list of programs that can be selected using the program change value. So you're limited to 128 presets. And these have to be ordered alphabetically so that they sort in the right numerical order that you want to address them with. So the best way is to prefix them with a number, 0 to 127. You can read about this on page 15 of the Zebra 2 manual. There we go. Sounds pretty good. Okay, now we're going to run the chord progression through the massive VST from Native Instruments. This one also requires a little bit of setup to get it going with program changes. To do this, you have to define what's called a program list. So go into the browser and find this program list. This defines 128 presets that you can select from using program change. So the idea is you drag in your favorites. And now Massive works with program changes. You can find this on page 91 of the Massive manual. Okay, we're going to bounce down Massive now. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna play these three together along with this microtonic drum track just for fun. Okay, I'm going to crack open this Max for Live device and show you what it's doing. So it takes MIDI CC information in here, uh, runs it through MIDI format, and runs it out as a program change. Uh, it also takes in the dial parameter and the increment and decrement buttons here as a way to also add control to program change. Pretty cool. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you got something out of this. I want to thank Mr. Bill for posting the original tutorial and get me thinking about this idea. Cheers, everyone.